hi everyone. I know Taylor, so hi Taylor. Uh, and then Yanni, welcome. Um, I'm Dr. Lee. I am graduate director of the English department and um, I actually just started this position two months ago. So forgive me if I do not have the answer to all your questions, but I can make sure to get the answers if I don't know them. Um, so I have a very quick presentation that um, I guess I will share with you guys and then um, afterwards, I'm happy to take questions and meet with you one-on-one -on -one if you'd like. Um, and I'll also drop a link to the presentation into the chat afterwards so that you can look at it at your leisure um, afterwards. Um, so, oh, somebody else is coming in. I will let them in. Um, hi, Ashlyn. Um, I'm Dr. Lee. Welcome to the open house. Um, I'm just going to start with a brief presentation. I was telling the other two, um, just giving you a quick taste of the English department and the MA program. So I'll go ahead and share my screen now. Um, hold on. Okay, can everybody see my screen? Just give me a thumbs up. All right, awesome. Okay, so uh, this is the English MA program, Graduate Open House. Um, I'm Dr. Julia Lee, I'm the grad director, and I'm also an associate professor of English. Um, and then I like having nice illustrations or paintings to kind of um, make my PowerPoints look more interesting, but um, this is an image or um, from a painting by an Indonesian um, artist who has this painting called Connecting, which is kind of a, an image of herself at the age she is now, and then an image of her when she's younger, and kind of the way of trying to connect with a previous self or her, her younger self. So I know how kind of intimidating um, maybe applying to graduate school is, or the sense of, you know, I was the first person to go to um, get graduate education in my family. And so um, I'm trying to provide some of the advice and some support that I wished I had had when I was entering graduate school. Um, so a little bit about me. I always like to share some biographical information. Um, I'm actually from Los Angeles. I was born in LA on Tongva land. So not too far away from the LMU campus. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, and hers. My parents were Korean immigrants, working class. They moved here from Korea um, in the 70s, around 1970, um, met here and then married. And then um, they were actually originally on the East Coast, but then moved to Los Angeles because there was a growing Korean community here. And then this is where I was born and was raised. Um, I went to undergrad and graduate school back east, and when I was in graduate school getting my PhD, I entered thinking that I would major in Victorian literature, and I'm still a big fan of 19th century British literature, um, but I also ended up taking classes in African American literature as well, and my dissertation was um, a study of the connections between the two, um, and then after I graduated, I taught at Loyola Marymount as a visiting professor for a few years and then moved to University of Nevada, Las Vegas. And I was hired there to teach African-American literature, spent several years there and then moved back to LMU where I've been since 2017. And here I teach African-American literature, Asian-American literature, British Lit Surveys, American Lit Surveys. Um, I'm also the, uh, I teach the graduate um, critical methodologies class, which is the required first year course that all of you will be asked to take. Um, and that's a primer into how to write graduate level work and how to learn about professionalization and um, conferences and things like that. Um, I have a picture of my family here. Those are my parents. They look a lot older now. They both have white hair. Uh, this was like 10 years ago. Uh, my kids are also a lot older now. My son, Bobby, is 10 years old and playing video games behind me, but you can't see because I have my background Hi. on. He just said hello. I don't know if you heard that. Um, and then my daughter, Lucy, um, is now 13 and very much a teenager, but this is a photo from when they were younger and 
maybe liked me more. Anyway, uh, I have two dogs and three cats. So you may get a visit from one or more of those as well during this presentation. Um, okay, so one of the things I always like to start with is um, this brief line from our vision statement. Over the last few years, the English department has really kind of taken a, a moment to reassess exactly what we stand for as a department and what we hope to achieve um, in our undergraduate and our graduate education. So this is essentially our mission statement. Um, the first line of which is the LMU Department of English is a community of creative writers, journalists, and literary scholars who are committed to the fundamental dignity, equality, and welfare of all human beings. Um, for those of you who are already familiar with LMU, this should sound very much in line with the university's mission, commitment to social justice, to the education of the whole person. Um, we really want this to be a community of peers. Yes, you have professors. Um, yes, you have your, your fellow members of your cohort. Um, you have your students. If you become a teaching fellow, you will have undergraduate students that you teach. But we are all part of this one interconnected community, and we aspire to treat each other with, re with respect and mutual care. Um, it's part of the university's mission, and it's our mission as well. Okay, just a few things like why LMU English. If you're looking at other master's programs, I think the, the thing that makes our program unique, we have very small class sizes. We purposefully keep our cohorts small. So in any given year, they run between 10 to 15 students, which means you get a lot of individual attention. Our professors are very committed to working closely with our graduate students. So um, I know some master's programs, the departments are very large and the culture is such that professors are kind of absentee. They show up to teach their classes and then they disappear. LMU is not like that. Our English department is very committed to undergraduate and graduate education. So you will have a lot of face-to-face -face time with us. Um, we also have conference and travel funding. Um, right now it's around $500 per student. So um, one of the things we encourage our students to do is explore attending a conference in literary critical studies and um, maybe get a chance to travel to a different city, learn how to participate in a scholarly community, deliver a paper. Um, this year and in past years, um, I've gone with some graduate students as a group um, to conferences. Um, we went to one in Las Vegas several years ago, the Multi-Ethnic Literatures of the US Conference. Um, and then last year, a graduate student, myself and another professor, LME professor, we attended the Mellis Conference in New Orleans together. And that was a lot of fun too. So makes the experience a little less intimidating. Um, there are also teaching fellowships and graduate assistantships that you can apply for. Um, all of that information is on our website and this will help um, if you apply for this and you receive this, this helps defray the costs of your graduate education. You get a small stipend, which um, can help make the program more affordable for you. Um, there's also more financial aid information about getting loans and things like that um, on the website. Um, and then finally, the thing that I always say is that we are a department committed to LMU's mission and um, we are invested in our community. Um, this is something that we have placed in the forefront, especially over these last few years, recognizing the challenges facing students of color, students from marginalized communities. And so we really want this to be a space where people from these underrepresented or marginalized backgrounds feel that they have a place and that they belong. Um, so these are some of our, um, you know, websites or our social media platforms that are useful and interesting to follow. I encourage you to follow the LMU English Graduate Program um, social media or the, the Instagram uh, handle uh, that gets posted. I mean, somebody posts, one of my graduate student assistant posts on it a couple times a week. And then um, we also have the general LMU English Department Instagram account, which also um, has frequent posts. So give you a sense of what life in our department is like. Um, and then I have a couple of links to, sorry, my son is 
yelling at his video game. Uh, they also have the LMU Graduate Program in English website and the LMU Graduate Admissions website here as well. So you can link to that. I will, just because I feel like it, I will show you. Here's the LMU Graduate Program, English Graduate Program website. Um, yeah, just take a minute to click through. It's, you know, we had an English graduate open house today, um, which was a blast. Tons of people showed up. Um, we also advertise events. Um, somebody told me about this, how does LA inspire first time novelists? So if you're interested in creative writing, um, we try to arrange, you know, get togethers where we meet at events like this and um, really take advantage of everything LA has to offer. So this is for first time novelists, a panel. Um, and then I guess this one, this is a recent poetry reading that we had in our department featuring two um, poets and um, also got a really great uh, attendance. Lots of people came and they also signed books. I took my graduate seminar to this reading and um, it was nice. It was very enlightening. Um, let me see if I can get back. Oh yeah. Um, I'll show you the LMU English department website. Oh, they already posted pictures from our awesome open house today. And so here you can see, these are mostly undergraduates, but oh, this is one of our graduate students, Pablo. Um, he's awesome. Oh, and I think this is another one of our graduate students. Um, fantastic, you know, kind of fun, open, you know, I don't know like again, intimate group of folks. Um, <laughs> that's me, <laughs> some of my colleagues. Uh, other undergraduates, this is Juan Amai Bush, who is one of our uh, English professors. He's a Chicano lit expert and also teaches graduate classes. Uh, this is Paul Harris, who's one of our my colleagues. This is um, Stuart Ching, who's our associate director, or sorry, associate chair. Um, he's also a wonderful um, and very, you know, big mentor to students. And this is some of my, Hi. oh, that's my daughter. I'm on a Zoom. That's okay. My daughter just came home from school. So she says hi in the background. Um, okay, I'll just, you guys can check that stuff out on your own. Oh, that's my daughter waving her hand. <laughs> Uh, okay, so uh, the, this is useful information. Uh, oh, I guess I should click on it. Graduate program in English. Um, and again, I'm gonna drop a link to this so you don't have to take a picture of it or worry about it. Um, but you can access this and learn more about our different um, degree requirements, the courses you have to take. We have a literature emphasis, we have a rhetoric and composition emphasis, and then a creative writing emphasis. So look through, we have professors who are experts in each of these fields. Um, and then say you come and you think, oh, I want to start as a rhetoric person, but then you decide, oh, I fell in love with creative writing or I fell in love with literature. Um, you're absolutely welcome to shift tracks while you are here. Um, a couple of our course offerings. Oh, I've taught the Caribbean lit class. Um, there are a couple other ones. And then professional development, publications and conferences. And then here's how to apply. So you can go here if you do decide to go ahead and apply. Um, okay, let me show one last. So this is the LMU graduate admissions site. And this is also incredibly useful if you want to apply or connect, ask questions to um, the admissions office, virtual open house week, et cetera, community events, and more information. So I encourage you to check that out as well. Okay. Sorry, let me, uh, sorry. Just want to keep that there. Okay, um, helpful contacts. Um, if you have further questions, you want to know more about different things, uh, Maria Jackson is our administrative coordinator. She's been at LMU forever. She knows everything about everything. Um, and she's a wonderful, warm presence. So feel free to email her if you have questions or are just confused. Um, 
you know, maybe you're trying to get in touch with a professor, but you can't, can't find their information, feel free to email her and she can direct you um, in the appropriate direction. Jacob Longini is our graduate assistant. He's a second year. He is in charge of the English um, uh, Instagram, um, the grad Instagram account, um, but he's also a very knowledgeable uh, member of our graduate cohort. So he's also always happy to answer questions. Um, Amy Ross Kilroy is our TF coordinator, also been at Loyola Marymount many, many years. She did her undergraduate degree at LMU, and she's in charge of um, mentoring and guiding all the TFs. So if you do decide to apply for a teaching fellowship and you receive one, you will work closely with her. KJ Peters is the chair of our department. Um, he's also the former graduate uh, chair or graduate director. So he knows the ins and outs of the graduate program. So if you cannot get in touch with me or you want, or if I don't have the answers, absolutely reach out to KJ. Um, he's always happy to answer questions and he has helped me an enormous amount. And then my information is here at the bottom of the slide. So I'm gonna stop sharing now um, so that I can get your questions. And I am also, um, I have a link to this entire presentation in the chat. So feel free to copy and paste that or click on it so you have it handy. Um, or you can email me afterwards and I can send it to you as well if you want all the information from there. Um, so yeah, so I am going to now just open it up to all of you if you have specific questions or um, areas you want me to explain further. I'm happy to answer all of your questions. Sure, Ashlyn. Hi, so I I don't remember exactly like how I got to this form on like the website, but because I'm really interested in like the teaching fellowship and like I saw that there's like you can fill out like which one you want to like apply for. And I was wondering, like, can you apply for more than one thing? Like there's like the teaching fellowship and then like the graduate assistantship or like whatever the other thing is. Can you apply for both? In Absolutely. Case, like, you don't get one and then, you know. Absolutely. And um, I think they ask you to, I haven't looked at the form recently, but I think they ask you to explain sort of why you're interested. Um, and, and there you can just, you know, make that clear that you're interested in both the teaching fellowship, but you'd also be very much open to a graduate fellowship um, or assistantship. And if there's one that you prefer or that you think you would like more because say you wanna be a teacher and so the teaching fellowship would be really helpful to you, you should mention that because when we're trying to figure out who to sign to what, we wanna make sure that we also meet your preferences. And then I had one more with that because I actually, I'm really interested in becoming a teacher. And so I was wondering like, after we get our master's degree is, do you guys have like a teaching credentials program that like at LMU? You know, I I know that there on the undergraduate level, there is, um, I think it's called SMTPP. I don't remember. The person to ask um, specifically about that is Amy Kilroy, whose information is in my slide, my slideshow. Um, I know there is some accreditation program or credentialing program for undergraduates who want to start teaching at local schools immediately after graduating. Um, in terms of the master's program, I'm not sure, but I can follow up with Amy for you or I can give you her information. Um, I do know that a lot of our teachers, um, I mean, sorry, a lot of our students do end up teaching at the local independent uh, private schools in the area or outside of the area where you don't need a specific like state credential or anything like that, but having a master's degree makes you a very attractive candidate because they know you have extra training. Um, so certainly, you know, and I, I have experience teaching in high schools, junior highs and high schools in the Los Angeles area. So I can provide guidance there. In terms of the public school system, I know that they have alternate credential, um, Although I think there's a teaching shortage, so I've heard that they've waived some of those credential requirements. But again, Amy would be the person, or Dr. Kilroy would be the person to follow up on that with. Okay. Thank so, you so much. Yeah, no problem. Anyone else? Uh, when is the deadline to apply for B Teaching Fellowship? 
That is a great question. I think it's on the the webs or the um I mean I I do think, you know, we look at we don't you can apply at any time and certainly I don't know what the God, this is the stuff I should know off the top of my head and I don't hold on a second. Let me look. I'm going to look at the Sorry, I'm going to go ahead and look on the website and see what I can find. Um, application requirements. Okay, priority deadline. Oh, they, they haven't updated the dates. I have to note to myself. Um, it currently says this was last year's application that's still up on the website. Um, they say May 1st is the priority deadline. Um, I mean, you know, we love getting earlier applications. Definitely if you want, um, you know, and I mean, we will look at all the applications certainly by May 1st. Sometimes applications trickle in over the summer. And if a candidate is a superstar and we're just like, oh my God, you know, we'll make room for this person. Um, we will sometimes accept those applications, but definitely for your best chances. And, you know, also for access to these fellowships, which are gonna be given out, you know, basically first come first serve, um, absolutely get your application in by May 1st at the very latest. If I try to get my application in by the end of December, would that be too soon? I mean, I don't think so. I let, I'll have to talk to KJ, who has done this previous years. Um, in general, what what I had understood is that the graduate admissions committee, so it's you know a group of us, um, sit and read all the applications, you know, once all of them have come in so that we can say, okay, we want the top however many candidates from this pool. Um, I don't think it's rolling where we read the applications as they come in, but let me get back to you about that because maybe maybe that's a new policy and I just don't know. Okay, um, I have one other question. Sure, go ahead, Taylor. Um, how many applicants are there usually for the overall master's program for English? I think it depends on the year um it fluctuates god and this is another place where i'm like oh i'm gonna throw out a number but i really don't know if it's very accurate um i was gonna say 50 30 to 50 maybe again fluctuating based on the year um and like i said we generally aim for a cohort between 10 to 15. I, I feel bad saying those numbers though now. So maybe I should, I can, I can get back to you about that too, because like I said, um, especially based on the year, sometimes the numbers are lower, sometimes they're higher and yeah. Okay, great, thank you. No problem. Anyone else? Yanni or Fulakemi, do you have any questions? And you can also drop questions in the chat. I know drop questions in the chat. Yeah, feel free to drop a question. Um, yeah. I guess while we wait, so Ashlyn, where what what is where are you at school or not at school? <laughs> like, what sort of why are you interested in the MA program, or you know, what are you particularly interested in? Yeah, so um, I'm a senior right now at UC Santa Barbara. Okay. Um, and I'm an English major. And so I want, I my like ultimate goal is to like teach at like the high school level. Oh, um, perfect. Yeah. And so I'm, yeah, I want to get my master's um, in English and then kind of go from there. But yeah, yeah that's, no. that's the plan as of now. 
That sounds awesome. Did you see the Linda Lindas when they were at UCSB last week? No, I didn't. Oh, I'm so, but yeah, I heard that they were playing there and I was very jealous. Oh. Um, one of my, one of the professors in our department, um, her son is a freshman, a first, or no, maybe he's a sophomore now at UCSB. So she goes up there pretty often. Um, what was I going to say? Um, is there a specific area in English that you're interested in? Um, you know, it varies right now. My, my specialization within my major I chose is like literature and the environment. So I'm really interested oh my in, in like those type of like texts and novels and stuff where it is about like climate change and, you know, just how literature and the environment can interact with each other in ways that we like don't really expect. So that's the thing that I think I'm the most interested in. Um, but yeah, I've, I've taken a lot of really cool classes. Like I'm taking like a science fiction class right now and that type of stuff. So, you know, it kind of varies like year to year where I'm like, wow, this is really interesting, but I also really like this, you know? Yeah. Are you taking a class? Um, oh, I forget his last name, but Ken is his first name. Yeah. Yeah. Ken Hiltner. I, I oh my gosh, that's yeah. so funny. I took his classes freshman year and that's what got me into like that want to like wanting to like pursue that specialization is because I took his class literature in the environment and then I took like a bunch of his classes after that during my first year that's crazy I went to graduate school with Ken oh really <laughs> it was my cohort in in my PhD program so say tell him hello he may not remember me but our cohort was pretty small um and did you know he was like a professional carpenter before he went to graduate school I had no idea he had a full like career and wow. I think was in his forties when he went to graduate school. And wow. I mean, he got out of the program in like three years. Cause he was, he's like, I don't have time to waste. <laughs> and so, <laughs> but I remember he was very interested in, um, he's a, an early modernist, right? I, I think, think he does so. like early modern yeah. Shakespeare, maybe. Yeah. Like right now he teaches mainly like, um, like, some lower division English courses, like it's like literature and literature in the environment or like literature and climate change, that type of stuff. And then I took like an upper division seminar with him about kind of like the same thing. But those are the only classes of his that I've taken, the ones that are like centered around climate change. But they've yeah. been some of my favorite classes I've taken. So he's great. great. That's great. Awesome. Um Oh, wow. Thank you, Cheryl, the, uh, my trustee representative from graduate admissions uh, did some research, very quick research. And yes, so the amount of applications vary widely. Um, so between 30 to 50, basically 45, 50. So, hey, I made a pretty good guess. Um, anyone else? Yeah. Taylor is one of, I taught him as a first year. So hi, Taylor. It was so great seeing you again earlier today. I know. Oh my gosh. You were like baby Taylor oh. when I last yeah. saw you. <laughs> yeah. No, it was so it was four years. I know. Yeah. Oh my God. It, I yeah. mean, yeah. flies. Time flies. And then half of no, it was COVID. So like I didn't see yeah. anybody for, for a long time. Um, so yeah, so Yanni and or Fulakami, if you want to email me or um, here, I'll leave, let me put my information in the chat so uh, you can email me. Okay, so julia.lee at lmu.edu. Email me anytime. I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, and otherwise, yeah, I'm going yeah. To, I'm going oh, to so, can you hear my son? So. He's. I'm going to. So what time are you going to come from? Bobby, can you be quiet? Uh, what time are you going from? Bobby. Shh. Sorry. Okay. I'm interested in poetry. Thank you. Uh, is there an emphasis on it? There is not a specific emphasis on poetry. Um, I get. Well, are you interested in creative writing? poetry because there is the creative writing track and you can choose poetry you know to be your area of specialization so you'll write you'll do like a portfolio of poems and work with one of our poetry professors um, absolutely you can do that 
Um, if you're interested in poetry as a genre, as like, you know, literary critic, sure, you could, you know, you could just focus on it, but there is no official, you know, declaring an emphasis in poetry slash critical writing. Um, you can just determine that on your own. Um, Cheryl Hugo just also wrote uh, the graduate admissions at LMU uh, email address if you need help with your application. Taylor, go ahead. Uh, for the writing sample, mm -hmm. um, if I do the critical essay writing sample, does that have to be a undergraduate work? Because I've been working on the work post-graduation about uh, cultural and literary memetics and the work of Wyndham Lewis, if that would be sure. something that I could submit. Yeah, if, if you think that is your best work, absolutely submit that. It does not have to be from an undergraduate class. Okay. Okay. <laughs> no problem. Okay. So yeah, if there are no other questions, I will let you guys go. Is that cool? Okay, well, I hope you guys apply and please feel free to reach out anytime. We really, we want you to be part of our community and yeah, I think it's a great, great program and great university. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. We'll talk to you later. Thank you. Have, Bye. have a nice day. Okay, you too.